1966, Malcolm Bick, MD, described a simple and very effective lid margin shortening procedure for the correction of entropion and ectropion. Unfortunately, in the interim, it has become neglected as a technique, overshadowed by the irrational popularity of the inherently inferior and more complicated lateral tarsal strip procedure. This video shows the steps involved in a modified Bix resection. Bick described crushing the lid at the intended transection sites with an artery clip before cutting as an effective way of obtaining hemostasis. The lower lid is then pulled to overlap the lateral canthus to determine the excess lid margin. The excess triangle of full thickness lid is then excised, again pre-crushed at the intended transection line for hemostasis. In this modification, the lid is not crushed to avoid unnecessary tissue damage. The second difference is to use accurate layered wound closure using absorbable sutures. Admittedly, Bick's original single layer full thickness closure is undoubtedly quicker to perform. First, Mark the intended incision line at 45 degrees down from the lateral canthal angle. This avoids any potential damage to the irreplaceable lateral canthal tendon. A full thickness diagonal cut is made with tenotomy scissors through the lateral canthus. The avoidance of crushing can lead to annoying bleeding from the severed lateral palpebral artery. To minimise this, cut the lid slowly with scissors. This causes temporary artery spasm for a few seconds. Prepare the sutures in advance for prompt placement as soon as the lid has been cut before bleeding restarts. Check that the lateral margin is free from its attachments to the lateral canthal tendon. If not, extend the cut. Insert a double-ended 6-0 absorbable suture on a half-circle needle into the severed lateral canthal tendon stump with a double pass. Give this suture a good tug to confirm that it is firmly engaging the tendon. There should be no give. Clip the suture ends together with a bulldog clip. Pre-place a similar second suture below the first for security. Use toothed forceps, such as Jail's or St. Martin's, to grab the severed lateral canthal tissue close to the canthus. The tendon is seldom clearly visible, but is characterised by its lack of give on tugging and is located between the skin and the conjunctiva close to the canthus. Again, clip the respective suture ends together with a bulldog clip. Now pull the cut lid laterally whilst an assistant pulls the upper pre-placed suture medially to overlap the canthus with the lid. While under moderate tension, mark the excess margin for excision. Cut off this excess as a triangle with tenotomy scissors and discard it. Pass both ends of the first pre-placed suture through the full thickness of the tarsal plate at the cut edge, about a millimetre to two millimetres from the margin. Enter from the conjunctival surface to exit on the anterior surface of the tarsal plate. Space the bites about one and a half millimetres apart and clip the two corresponding suture ends together. Repeat these same steps with the second suture. Once more, take strong full thickness tarsal plate bites and space them one and a half millimetres apart. Again, clip the corresponding suture ends together. 
Now pre-place a 7-0 absorbable suture across the eyelid margin gap as a horizontal mattress suture. The needle is first inserted through the cut edge to exit in the lash line. Then it re-enters the tarsal plate through the meibomian orifice line and exits through the cut edge of the tarsal plate. Now take the same 7 suture through the upper lid, this time entering the tarsal plate at the lateral canthal cut and exiting through the meibomian orifice line. Finally, re-enter through the lash line and bring the suture out subcutaneously through the wound. Clip the two suture ends together. Now the tarsal plate sutures are tied tightly starting with the pair furthest from the margin. Place the first throw of the knot and then pull the suture ends laterally to advance the lid to the canthus. The tarsal bites act as a pulley which is helpful with this. Now snug down the first throw against the tarsus. This step can be repeated to ensure complete apposition of the tissues. Follow this with two or three locking throws to make the knot secure. Do not cut the suture ends to less than two millimeters or they may unravel spontaneously. Gripping the suture just above the knot with a needle holder to act as a spacer avoids having to blame the assistant. Repeat the same sequence for the more important marginal 6 suture. Since the first suture is holding the lid in position, there is now minimal risk of the suture slipping accidentally during time. Now tighten and tie the canthal margin 7 suture so that the join pouts slightly. Make sure that the cut suture ends are buried to avoid irritation. Spring scissors to me please. Orbicularis closure is optional. I recommend using a single long reach orbicularis suture to both close the orbicularis and to help bury the tarsal suture ends. This reduces the risk of them becoming exposed and infected and needing early removal. This muscle suture makes further skin closure optional as the overlying skin comes together naturally. Despite this, I place a couple of 7-0 absorbable horizontal mattress skin sutures to complete the repair. There are two obvious advantages of shortening the lid at the lateral canthus. Firstly, there is no risk of a lid notch developing. At worst, the palpebral aperture lengthens imperceptibly. Secondly, the scar is well hidden in the natural skin creases. These advantages are shared by both Bix resection and the lateral tarsal strip procedure. However, Bix procedure does not involve burying a strip of meibomian gland bearing tarsal plate, a practice which can cause granuloma and inclusion cyst formation. Furthermore, 
it does not risk damage to the lateral canthal tendon, which often occurs inadvertently with a lateral tarsal strip. Since the sutures absorb completely within two months, there is no risk of late suture-related problems. Finally, lateral canthal strips do stretch and fail with time. The BIC repair does not. The BIC resection works equally well in the upper lid for the correction of the floppy eyelid syndrome. I therefore commend the BIC resection to you as a simpler, safer and better alternative to the tarsal strip.